we break you down, let's look like hip abductions tight. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have a hard time uh, striding sideways. Your ankles are tight, so you probably have some weakness in your lower leg. Really tight internal, so you're gonna be, it's gonna be hard for you to turn your femur in rotation to drive your pelvis rotation. Mm -hmm. You have uh, your hip flexion's okay, your hip extension's a little tight. Okay, so from there, let's take you out of the leg lift. Okay, so you can see coming out of leg lift, you quickly open. Mm -hmm. So right out of leg lift, you extend your leg, you start shifting weight. I can tell you're shifting weight because I can see your pelvis tipping. Mm -hmm. It's tipping this way. So you start leaning weight forward, you start opening your leg and you're kind of leaving this behind. We want to fall forward and down at the same rate. So I'm falling. I'm not leaning into my front hip. I'm not opening early. I'm falling, staying closed. So you're opening early. And then once this starts to follow and come down, you just, I mean, there's not even really a drive. You just let it lay down. And what it is, is it's just early rotation and you're flying open because of it and then you're pulling into your glove because of it. So typically what happens if, if we don't sit and load the back leg, so if we don't move forward and down the same rate and get the shin linear, we can't propel and drive the hip rotation. So if, when this lands, what we'll do is we'll pull the glove to help pull the hip around. As you can see, as the glove's going behind the back, the hip's coming around. So when we look in the kinematic sequence, we look at the speeds, so this is time and this is degrees per second. So we're seeing how quickly things are accelerating. The red is your hip speeds. The green is your trunk speeds. And if you're going fast, you're seeing hard peaks. You can see these little humps here. So basically there's not a lot of acceleration through the hip. As you land here, you can see your, your, your peak about right here. And then your trunk peaks not farther away. And it's, it's not even much higher. And it's because of this blue, this blue glove, which this is the glove speed. It started pulling right here. The moment it tucked hard behind the back, right there, is when it started peaking. What it was doing, it was it was helping this back hip to come around. There's a study that showed low velocity pitchers have more left to right movement with their glove. So they pull left to right. High velocity guys just they'll just turn it down because they get all the power from their hip pushing them forward, pushing them forward, which will carry their trunk forward. A lot of your power is in your glove, which is just spinning you, as you can see here. It's spinning you around in rotation. So the power is through this glove. And what happens is when you pull that hard through the glove, your arm gets caught behind. It hyperangulates or it, it drags because you can see this is ready to cock as you're landing, but this is pulling so early that now this gets caught behind. And this is where your TJ came from. See, when your trunk is open, you can't have your elbow behind your back. If your elbow's behind your back and your trunk's open, you're putting a lot of force in the front of your shoulder and you're delaying pronation, which reduces the stress in the UCL. So what you're doing is holding UCL under tension longer. As you can see, it's staying under tension way longer because it was dragging and then typically the effect of dragging is pushing, okay? So if, if you had landed and had more hip power, see this is when you're landing, your hips are all the way back here. If you'd had more hip drive, you wouldn't have to pull this glove to bring you in rotation. Your hips would lead, your trunk would follow, and then your arm would sync up with your trunk better, and you'd get more of a forward release as opposed to a rotational release, okay? So we really have to, with you, and a lot of it in your mobility challenges right now, but we have to teach you how to not shift your weight early, how to fall forward and down the same rate, how to stay loaded in this back leg, how to get this shin linear, and propel and drive before opening your front side. So if we can learn to load and propel and drive this before we open our front side, then everything's gonna sync up better and you're gonna, not only, I mean, you're at a point where you're big enough to where you probably could throw harder. You're just dragging your arm so bad, your arm doesn't wanna keep going through the abuse. So when we teach you to close your front side and power your backside, your velo is probably gonna take off because you're gonna take the stress off your arm. Make sense? Yes, but the thing is, we have to really address the, the hip mobility issues, and I know you have some power issues, like looking at your vertical jump, it's 26 inches. 
Um, you know, if in your 210, the major league weight is 225, around 30, 31 inches, so not a lot of power in the lower half. I mean, it's not too bad. It's, it's getting close to average, like 106 broad a little bit. That's better than a 26 vert. You know, your strength, the 500 is decent. You know, 900 is elite. So, you know, things are average to below average here that we could get a lot better. And then a lot of these, these real restrictions in your hip mobility need to get better. And then this stuff will be easier to these principles will be easier to apply and then you're gonna see a lot of success. Now over here in your spin, you can see you have a lot of horizontal movement and it's more than likely as you come to release, because you're pulling your arms dragging, your arms flying out here and typically when you fly out, you stay on the side of the ball. And when you stay on the side of the ball, you typically are gonna get maybe, you know, like your spin axis starts to come down. You're gonna start putting in more horizontal movement because you're almost a, you're almost a sidearm pitcher at that point. So when you pull that hard in rotation, you typically fly out in rotation, you typically get the horizontal movement. So if we're not pulling that hard and, and your, your trunk is staying more forward, you're, you're probably gonna kill a lot of this horizontal movement and you're gonna start getting more vertical movement on it. So, so you'll see a benefit here and you're gonna see a benefit in velocity and health over there.